Hi everyone, this is Kaval Jit Kurmi, working as Principal AIML Specialist Solutions Architect. And in this session, we will learn how you can use Amazon SagePicker to deploy and inference Llama 2 models to build chatbot-like applications. So let us see a quick overview of uh, SageMaker model serving stack. Now SageMaker provides a very deep set of uh, machine learning tools and capabilities, uh, which makes your journey of deploying your models very customized, performant, and managed. If you look at the stack, at the bottom tier is where you have an option to choose from CPUs, GPUs, or going completely serverless with your model deployments. In the layer above is where SageMaker offers pre-built, optimized deep learning containers where you have an option to pick up PyTorch, MXNet, uh, TensorFlow kind of frameworks, and the model serving stacks. And on top of these, uh, SageMaker offers capabilities where you can choose from multiple different inference options. So you can choose from real-time inference, async inference, uh, serverless. Now, if you look at this entire stack, uh, the choice of compute, uh, the choice of uh, picking up a container or model serving stack, and the inference option, uh, which provides you with a very high performance at a lower cost, is what makes SageMaker a very good choice to deploy your models. So with, with that, uh, let us quickly see how you can deploy your models on SageMaker with three simple steps. So step one here, uh, we will uh, first point to a location where our model artifacts um, are, are located. It could be an S3 location, it could be Hugging Face uh, model ID as well. Uh, second step, we'll define a container image. Uh, you can uh, pick up from the one of the managed uh, SageMaker containers that we talked about in the previous slide, or you can bring in your own containers as well. And then you can specify an IAM role, which handles the identity uh, access and management. And the second step, uh, you will define your endpoint configuration using create endpoint config API. This is where you define the instance types that you want to use to host your model and the number of instances that you want to use. Uh, you can specify an auto-scaling policy uh, which will scale up or scale down your instances as your traffic pattern will change. You can also specify model serving stack and deployment strategies uh, at this step as well. And finally, you will create an endpoint using create endpoint API. In this uh, specific case, we are using real-time endpoint where a client will send a request to those endpoints and will wait for the response. Though there are multiple other options that we have talked about in the previous slide, uh, like async inference, serverless inference, and others, uh, which you can also choose. We were gonna deep dive on those inference options in the next video in this, in this series. But for now, uh, let us quickly look at a demo where we will see how you can create the real-time endpoints and deploy Llama 2 models on SageMaker. So we are switching on to our Jupyter notebook here. So in this notebook, we will deploy Llama 2 7 billion uh, model on SageMaker endpoint. Now Llama 2 is uh, in the family of Llama large language model, which is created and released by Meta team. And we'll use a large model inference container to deploy this model. Now large model inference, also called LMI, is the um, uh, advanced uh, model serving technology uh, which SageMaker offers through a specialized container. Uh, this is powered by DGL serving and offers a lot of different um, advanced optimizations like quantization, tensor parallelism, continuous batching, and others. Now, this also gives you an option to work with a high performance uh, model serving libraries like VLLM, tensor RTLLM, uh, DeepSpeed, and others. And again, uh, you have options to pick up uh, from other model serving stacks uh, like TorchServe. NVIDIA Triton TensorFlow Serving 2. So uh, to start with the code, we will uh, import the libraries uh, and dependencies that we need to uh, run our code. We will use SageMaker Python SDK and SageMaker session to interact with SageMaker APIs. And we'll create variables to point to uh, the Boto3 clients for S3 SageMaker services. As a next step, uh, we will uh, pull in the uh, deep learning container. Um, in this case, we are using a DGL serving container powered by DeepSpeed. And this is a specific version that you would uh, use uh, for the container image. And then you will define the environment variables which will, uh, uh, which will define the behavior of this container. If you see here, we are mentioning that our model is in hugging phase and this is the model ID, uh, which we want to download um, from hugging phase. We have specified tensor parallel degree here, which is max, which means uh, we want to use deep speed um, and partition our model across uh, no, maximum number of GPUs that a particular instance will have. And when it comes to rolling batch, uh, this is the batching technique, which could be continuous or iteration level batching. 
Uh, in this case, uh, we are using VLLM, which is a high performance open source model serving framework, um, especially in the cases where we have the open-ended uh, text generation or chatbot-like application, VLLM has proven to provide a very high throughput. So we are using VLLM here to kind of um, do continuous uh, batching uh, where it will merge concurrent quests coming in for inference. And we have also specified a batch size of 32, which means that uh, 32 concurrent requests could be batched together. Any request which comes beyond that will be queued up. And there are other, other environment variables as well, which you can um, mention and refer through our LMI documentation. Okay, now the three steps that we talked about, uh, we will be uh, implementing those in our code. Uh, step one is we will create a model using create model API. Uh, this is where we define a model name uh, and you pass in your inference image that we have just um, uh, initialized uh, in the previous cell and the environment variable, which will have uh, the hugging face model ID from where the model needs to be downloaded. Remember, we our model could be in S3 location as well. If it would have been in S3, we could have used uh, S5 CMD optimization that LMI uh, container offers, uh, which is a very optimized way to download a model from S3 over to the SageMaker uh, endpoint. And then, um, you know, the model is created. As a second step, we'll create the endpoint config using the create endpoint config API. Now, in this case, uh, we are specifying the instance count as count as one and we're using G5-2x large instance. Now G5 is a A10G uh, tensor core GPU, and it has a one GPU uh, uh, in that instance type, right? And we have defined routing strategy at this step as well, uh, which is the least outstanding request. This means that once the model is deployed, uh, and if you have multiple instances behind an endpoint, uh, the routing strategy, it will route the request to the instance which have the least number of outstanding requests. And along with this, you can define a model serving stack and uh, uh, other deployment strategies like shadow deployment or A-B testing uh, at this particular step. Now, as a third step uh, is where we will actually create our endpoint, right? So here we will pass on the endpoint configuration that we have uh, created in the last step and then give it an endpoint name. And then we'll, uh, we'll create our endpoint using this API. So it approximately take around 15 minutes uh, or longer. So we have already created that. But uh, when you will replicate this example in your machines, uh, you can use this code to track the progress of that model endpoint, right? And once the endpoint is up and running, uh, you will see the status as in service. Now there are three options uh, to invoke that endpoint. The first option is you to use SageMaker Python SDK. Now this is the high level abstraction API and data scientists love to work with it. And the way to use SageMaker Python SDK is to use sagemaker.predictor API and then initialize that with the endpoint name that we have used to create our endpoint and pass in our SageMaker session and uh, the JSON serializer. And then once you have the predictor um, variable, you can use that to predict uh, your uh, and invoke your endpoint uh, with the input prompt that we have specified here as what does Amazon offers and the parameters where you can define uh, the number of new tokens that you want to generate and whether you want to uh, use any kind of sampling. So in this case, we will be generating the new tokens um, without any sampling, All right? So if I run this uh, cell right now, uh, this will um, give me a result uh, which will specify uh, what uh, Amazon.com offers. The second way to invoke uh, this endpoint is to use Porto 3. Now we have seen MLOps engineers uh, use uh, this APIs extensively. Uh, now this API offers a low level constructs and gives you more flexibility in providing the input variables and to uh, work with the response that you get from the endpoint, right? Here you get a, a JSON object with the same input prompt and the parameters, and then you invoke the endpoint using SageMaker Boto3 client. And once you get a response, then you can decode that response and uh, can get the output. Right. Now the third way is uh, how the application developers like to invoke the SageMaker endpoint, and that is through Postman. So I'll bring up this interface, right? So you define the uh, SageMaker endpoint URL. You can get this endpoint URL either from SageMaker Studio or from SageMaker console. And you specify the body, the same JSON object where you pass in your input prompt and you pass in your parameter on how many tokens you want to generate and whether you want to use sampling and other parameters that the Lama2 model uh, or a particular model serving stack offers. 
And then in the headers, you just define the content type uh, that uh, you are using. And in the authorization tab, this is where you kind of pass in your user, a security ID, and access key so that you can authenticate this request uh, with the StageMaker IAM. And once you send this request, this is endpoint, this is where you get a response. So key takeaways here, there are three simple APIs that you could use uh, to deploy your models to StageMaker endpoint, uh, which is create model, which will point to the location where your model is located, uh, create endpoint config, which will uh, help you dis uh, configure uh, the kind of infrastructure that you want to deploy your model on, the deployment strategy, the kind of model serving stack you want to use, routing strategy, and others. And finally, you, once you have created that endpoint config, you will use the create endpoint API to create and bring your endpoint up. So this concludes our demo. You can refer to these links to dive deeper into the example that we have just covered and to look into the SageMaker uh, model deployment documentation. Uh, I hope you have found this session helpful. Uh, we'll see you in the next video of this model deployment series. Thank you.